A very good morning to you. It's 11 o'clock Monday, the 3rd of July, 2017. And a warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. Coming to you, as always, live from the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire. Unless it's another time of the day, year or month. In which case you are watching a recording. Yes, boys and girls, this programme will be here for hundreds of thousands of years. Just think of that. In years to come, people will watch this program and think that everyone was like me. I think that's a nice thing to think of. It's a bit like the Japanese tourists. You know when they get off the buses with their cameras, snap, 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 and they see me walking past and they think everyone is like me. I don't think that's a problem at all, really, to be honest, do you? Anyway, good morning. I'll try and get the camera angles right this morning. Yes, that wasn't a fault yesterday. Um, I had the wrong camera on and you spent about 10 minutes looking at the back of my head, which isn't a particularly good look, as you can see. You know, I mean, we've got this thing here going on. I keep thinking I've still got. Do you remember I got this? Hang on. Is it here? Here it is. It's here. Do you remember I got this Christmas from my niece? This blackening, blackening uh, spray thing that you're supposed to spray on your hair to make it look more full. And I've been saying ever since Christmas that I'm waiting for my mate to come around and we'll make a video of this and we'll see if it works or not. I'm still waiting to do that. It's only been six months. I don't like to be rushed. That's the thing with me. I don't like to be rushed. Often when my mate comes around here, and even even though he might have said, yeah, can you be ready for 10? And at 10 o'clock, is it, are you coming? Are you coming? And I'm not ready. Do you know what I mean? It's not like an appointment or work. If I have an appointment, okay, or work, I am at somewhere anything up to 45 minutes before I need to actually be there. Very, very strict on myself for appointment times and for work times, especially with appointments. If it's like NHS, because I do uh, I have to go to a little hospital now and again and a doctor and what have you. And I think, you know, they're very, very busy people, very, very busy people. They are not there at my convenience, you know, and you make an appointment for 11 o'clock and you do. Oh, I can't. I can't oh, 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 I'm going to be a little bit. I'm going to be about 15 minutes late. What about the person at 11.15? Does that mean they're going to have to be 11, 15 minutes late? And then the one after them, what if the one at 11.15, oh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I'll be about half an hour late. And then that, do you see, and it pushes everything back? No, I'm very, very good with appointments. And I cannot abide lateness. I really cannot abide lateness for people with appointments. And they think the whole world revolves around them and that everyone else is there at their convenience. No. I mean, it's free to start with anyway, isn't it? No, nope, I'm there on time every time. Now, when it comes to, say, a family outing or a meeting up with, with a friend... It, it, I'm not so I'm I'm not so strict with myself, so I can be five ten minutes late. An example is on Saturday, as you well know, I popped down to see Auntie Marion, cousin Helen, and cousin Vince in Weybridge, a lovely place called the Anchor, which I told you about yesterday. I was three minutes late. Do you know Judge Helen, as I like to call her, Judge Helen sat. No, it wasn't actually. It was Auntie Marion who, who looks out. She says, "Oh, you're late," and I'm like, "What? Three minutes?" Three minutes late, dear. It's not an appointment, is it? <laughs> what are you like with lateness or anything like that? Shocking, isn't it, really? Anyway, so we've got the camera angle, angle right today. We're over there, we're over there, we're over there. And that's good. Uh, I'm also waiting for a delivery this morning uh, of my new router for the Americans router. My new router for, are you ready for this? Ba, 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 ba. 300 meg Virgin Media. Thank you very much. It just gets faster and faster and faster, doesn't it? 300 meg down and I think 20 meg up. So my new router is on its way, all for only an extra three pounds. Was it two or three? Two pounds. Three, two or three pounds a month for that extra 100. I think that's fantastic value. I really do. Anyone, any of you on BT? Hmm? Sky, what you got? 60 meg? 50 meg? 40 meg? Ah! Peasants, dear. Peasants. 300 meg with Virgin Media is to be installed in these premises, hopefully at some point later today or maybe tomorrow if it comes late. The only thing is the appointment 
waiting for the item to come to your house. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Anything between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. Are you serious? Eight. It's not like buying something from John Lewis, is it? Oh, no. They give you a window of opportunity. Yes. Could you come between 10 and 12? Yes, that's OK, sir. 10.30, get a knock on the door. Oh, good morning, sir. John Lewis, men standing there in overalls and green overalls. Very nice. Where would you like it, sir? Da, 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 da. Oh, not, not, not this delivery firm. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the delivery firm is. You ready? You ready? Yodel. Oh, God. Yodel, dear. I mean, to be honest, I've not much hope of it arriving at all or left outside or something like that. Yodel, uh, yodel, let me, ooh, yodel, let me, ooh, yodel, let me, ooh, yodel, let me, oh, yodel, let me, oh, 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 yodel, let me, oh, 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 yodel, let me, oh, 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 yodel, let me, oh, 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 yodel, let me, oh, 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 of the yodeling. I'm liking the sound of that. Let's try it. Let's just try that. La, Lord, le, eh, 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 ah. no, 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 I've got to get the key right. Hang on a minute. Let's try it again. Yo, oh, no. Yo, oh, 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 ah. Yeah, I'm liking that. Yodeling away. Well, they're going to bring my new router delay sometime between now and nine o'clock at night. Now, obviously, I can't be here at nine o'clock at night. So best friend Ron will be over, hopefully around about five o'clock this afternoon, to sit in waiting for Mr. Yodle oh, with my 300 meg Virgin Media download thing. And I hope it works. Sometimes, although I've got to say, I've never, ever had a problem with any of the Virgin stuff not working when I've put it in. It's always been a real br plug and push a couple of buttons and it just starts working. Unlike, unlike my Toyota, um, which I'm having a bit of a problem connecting internet with it. Now, uh, I've got a little screen in the middle of the car. It's all built into the car, right? And you connect your iPhone... Here is my iPhone SE. It's just six months old. It's my iPhone SE. Um, and you connect that to it via Bluetooth, you see. Now, the phone works. I can talk, you know, hands-free. I just, I, I, actually, I, I just hit a button on the steering wheel. So I say, call, uh, call Alan Russell. Although I wouldn't be able to call Alan Russell. Oh, I could, I could actually. Call Alan Russell. OK, and it would then say calling Alan Russell and it start ringing. And it probably go to answer phone. <laughs> I have noticed that more and more people have answer phones and all the calls go to answer. Phone. Anyway, so that's how it works. Also, I can play music on it, you know, just uh, touch the screen and music starts playing. So that all works. Now, the car itself has got little Internet functions, including a sat nav. OK, but the sat nav needs the Internet to work on my little screen. It says connect to the Internet and I hit that connect to the Internet, but nothing happens. And it says connection failed. And I'm sure I had it working at some point, but I can't get it working again. And I don't know why. And I've rung up Toyota this morning and I'm waiting for a call back. So she might call back as well. Natalie at Toyota. Lovely lady, Natalie. I've already spoke to customer services. They couldn't help me there. So uh, I'm waiting for them to call me. And hopefully I, I can get that uh, Toyota thing. But it's so frustrating. And I'm sure, like, I'm doing everything correctly, you know. I'm sure I'm not doing anything wrong. While I was on the phone, I, I booked in a car service as well. So that's all happening in a few weeks' time. Uh, how many is that? 20,000 miles I've done in that since September. I do a lot of miles tonight, 20,000 miles. Let's say hello to some of the people joining us this morning. Uh, good morning to Wendy, who says, have to get ready for work soon. Oh, going already, Wendy. God, that's quick. Hello to Alan uh, Greed Haray. Uh, Jade's with us. Good morning, Jade. John Aitken, Mary Wright. Adam the Plumber's there. Morning, Adam. Uh, Stephen's there in uh, Australia, Sydney. Peter Hyde is there. Morning, Peter. Diane says, good morning, Chris. Have a lovely day. And to you as well, Diane. Have you, have you uh, recovered from your birthday celebrations? Have you noticed some people have now, it's my birthday week or my birthday month. They've extended it so that I can get drunk even more. 
ghastly people, dear. I hope you don't spend time getting drunk like that, Diane. I would be very, very disappointed. My idea as a fantastic birthday is sitting down on my own in the living room and watching episodes of Dad's Army. Yes. Who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? I love it. Dad's Army. Morning to Ray Reynolds. Uh, what a weekend the Soho Village Fate, which uh, he was playing his ukulele at last night, was in the gardens of St. Anne's Church, opposite the Duke of Wellington pub. And on Saturday, we were on the stage at the City Varieties Music Hall in Leeds, where BBC television's The Good Old Days came from in the 1970s. So Ray Reynolds has been very busy. Although you missed out last night, Ray. Oh, my God. What a fantastic karaoke night last night. At the Camden Eye. We've been there now... Is it three weeks? I think it's three. I think that's the third week. So I've had a third or fourth week last night. What a fantastic night. It was really busy and lots of singers and lots of new people as well. Lots of new people as well. We've got a couple of uh, particular good singers that are new that I wanted to read out to you. Uh, Lady Phoenix, and she's just stunning. I find out, of course, that she's a model. <laughs> she does modelling. And her and her lovely husband, Dave, are what a lovely... You know how you see some people and you just know they're meant to be together? You know? And they are two such people. The Lady Phoenix, Jade, and her husband, uh, David. Such lovely, lovely people. And they can both sing really well. They've got a business. They do liquid nitrogen ice creams. Yes, uh, they've got a little place in uh, Brent Cross, I think it is, and they do these liquid nitrogen ice creams. And Dave was telling me um, that it's quite a labour intensive thing, you know, because you've got to do each one individually. <laughs> you know, it's not like going to Baskin and Robbins. And what one do you want, mate? I'll have vanilla. And then out that comes the scoop. And they scoop this, you know, a smaller thing. A small, they scoop in as small a portion as they possibly can uh, without you complaining that it's too small. It's not like that. No, they have to make each ice cream individually. And I think Dave was saying that there are 2,000 flavours of ice creams. Yes. So check them out. If you're ever around Brent Cross... Look for the place that just just ask someone in there. Where is it they do liquid uh, nitro? Is it liquid nitrogen ice or nitrogen ice creams? I'm not quite sure what it is. Hang on, let me look up nitrogen. I know what I can put. Let's put nitrogen. Hang on a minute. Nitrogen ice creams, Brent Cross. I bet there's something to come up. Perhaps they're more. Fa they might be more famous than um. Then, uh, then I know. Is it? No, is that it? No, Sunbury on Thames. I don't... Li yes, liquid nitrogen ice creams. Ah, Brent Cross Shopping Centre. That must be... Is it there? Is it Joe DeLuce's? I don't know, actually. Don't know if that's the one. Yes, so that it says Joe DeLuce... DeLuce's. I don't know if that's their one or they might be a different one. Maybe there's photographs of them, is there? I can spot them there. No. No. Anyway, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, I've never had a liquid nitrogen ice cream. Have you? You ever had something like that? No? Anyway, so those two were there last night. Lovely couple, as I say. Uh, and also, new singer. Oh, get Check out her name. You ready? Simba. Oh, what a lovely name. Simba. As in the Lion King. Uh, what's that song go? And the circle of life. Perhaps I should do that one tonight. I did have an idea of a song I was going to sing tonight and I haven't written it down. And I should always write songs that, because I get these ideas, oh, I'll try that song. And then if you don't write it down, it's gone. I've got papers blowing all over the place in here today. Um, so Simba was there last night. She came all the way from Watford and she had a great night. And uh, her friend, I don't know if it was her boyfriend or just her friend, Howie, who was from Ilford in Essex. Two new people last night, both who could sing, as I say. We get some great singers in there. You know, I always say karaoke is not about how good a singer you are. It's about taking part. I don't care how you can sing, whether you can sing or not. Doesn't matter. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Now, we do get serious karaoke singers come along sometimes and they're a bit too serious. Generally, you can spot them straight away. They don't mingle with anyone. They go and sit in a corner on their own and they look miserable all night long until it's their turn to sing. That's not karaoke singing. You know. 
And if you really, if you, and, and they think they're really fantastic singers. Well, let me tell you, if, you've, if you're that good, why aren't you on a stage somewhere? You know, karaoke is all in. Let's have a bit of fun. That's what karaoke is to me. Always has been, always will be. When people do ask me to do serious karaoke nights, they don't usually ask me back. <laughs> Oh, dear. Uh, good morning, Rod Brown, who says, I cannot stay too long. Going to hatched, matched and dispatched at the local council soon. Are you really? <laughs> good luck with that, Rod. Morning to Jane West this morning. Morning, Jane. Um, have we got the... Uh, have we changed the picture at the back. That's the old Thames television logo behind us. Look at that beautiful picture of... Uh, old. Well, it's old London now, isn't it? You know, if that was new, I suppose you'd have the, the, the O2 on there as well, wouldn't you? I would guess so. Uh, something like that, anyway. Um, oh, Peter's got one gig. That, have you really, Peter? One gig? Wow. That's good, isn't it? Dear, dear, dear me. John's got... Well, John's. Have you got the uh, 300 meg as well now, John? Is that what you've got there? How much do you usually use a month, Chris? Of what? Oh, what? Uh, uh, as in... I As in... Data. I have no idea. Don't don't look at that. Do you? Does that? Do you have to look at that then? Do you? Are you limited, Ash Allen? Are you limited to to, to kind of the amount of um, uh, gigabytes you can use on your internet? We. Well, I don't have any limits or anything. It just, I just send up and download and and that's it. I don't look at any meters or anything like that. No. Um. What's that there? Alien Covenant. What is that you've sent me there? Watch Alien Covenant. I don't know what that is. Is that some sort of film or something like that, Stephen? I'll have a look later. Thank you, Stephen. Um, <laughs> Wendy's still there waiting for a lift. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my box from Yo Leo. Adam says, I think you would have to have your hotspot on your phone turned on for internet to work in the car. I do. I do, Adam. And I know the hotspot's working because I can hotspot from my laptop to the phone to the internet if I want to. But for some reason, I can't get it to work in the phone at all. I, I, I just um, can't get that to work, Adam. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed our video streams last night. Unfortunately, on the way into the venue, I dropped the short um, iPhone holder and it broke. So we had to kind of balance the the iphone the so you could see the the karaoke last night it was actually balanced on a on the mixer and it fell over a few times which which those of you with beady eyes would have noticed thank you diane had a lovely day for her birthday she had a glass of wine just one glass oh well that's all right my sister makes her last a week yeah they, a lot of them do now you know they do make them last a week their birthdays they go on and on and ever thank you uh jade break and cross mail whipsmith Whipsmith liquid nitrogen ice cream. There you are. Whipsmith liquid nitrogen ice cream. That's the one that Jade and her husband runs, Dave. I've never had one. I can't have ice cream at the moment. Oh, it wasn't that one I mentioned. So that's the one that Jade and her husband runs. Uh, Whipsmith liquid nitrogen ice cream in the Brent Cross um, Mail or shopping centre. OK, try one out. I can't have ice cream at the moment, Jade, because I'm on the slim as well, dear. I'm on the slim as well, dear. Yes. Morning to Ray B. Ray B's with us this morning as well. Uh, yes, John's got the 300 meg, so that's excellent. Just waiting for it to come. Very exciting. Alan says, what happened to the camera? What camera? What camera? What camera? A lot of questions coming for you today. Is that because of the job you do? You like to ask a lot of questions, don't you? <laughs> now, be very careful. Now, I've always said to you about Skegness, haven't I? Always said to you about Skegness and what a dodgy old place that is. Ghastly, awful place. Hundreds of millions of people descend onto this fun fair and beat with the sad looking donkeys in Skegness every year. Well, don't think you're safe there. In the Super Soraway Sun, this was actually um, on Saturday, actually. A man has been left fighting for his life after he was allegedly bitten by a spider. Oh, my God. Bitten by a spider. Yes. During a... Oh, where is it now? I've, I've lost my place. I've lost my place. I've lost my place. I've lost my place. During a... Where is it now? 
doing a barefoot walking through grassland. Well, there you go. You should always wear your shoes, dear. Always wear your shoes. Awful. Writing on Facebook on Friday, uh, this girl Kim said her male friend was walking in Skegness when he felt a huge pain which led to his foot swelling more than five days ago. She added he was later taken to Boston Hospital in a critical condition with what she claims as blood poisoning. The victim, who has not been named, is said to not be in danger after the sting was removed from his foot. What do you mean removed from his foot? Do they leave something in there? Oh, my God. What if it's like a baby spider egg? That could have possibly been injected into his feet. And then you're, so you're in bed. Well, oh, what? My foot's a bit itchy. And all these spiders are coming out of it. Oh. Oh. Miss Needham says that the Facebook post that she didn't want to scare anyone, but simply wanted to raise awareness. She wrote, a friend of mine has spent over five days in a critical condition at Boston Pilgrim Hospital with blood poisoning caused by a bite. It is not known what bit him. Oh, well, how do you know then? He felt a sharp pain like he stood on a twig. Two hours later, his foot had swollen. They don't know what bit him, but have mentioned a spider. So we don't even know it was a spider. Don't even know that. I mean, why has this even been reported? Dear. There's another girl here, a little Scarlet, eight years old, suddenly became ill with flu-like symptoms after being bitten while walking out in the woods. Orange and yellow poison then started oozing out of a small hole in her leg after the skin covering it burst. Oh my God, have you ever had... Anything yellow oozing out of any of your holes, boys and girls? That is the question. If not, there are very well equipped clinics in this country that can help you with that problem. This girl said then, incredibly, a small spider burst out of her leg while she was ever in a bath at her nan's house. Oh, she was only eight years old. She rushed her to hospital where she was eventually diagnosed with a spider bite and given antibiotics. The hairdresser believes the spider may have embedded in her daughter's leg while she was playing on a tyre swing. That's it. That's in Lincolnshire as well. And my sister wants me to move there. God's sake. The place is alive with spiders, Lincolnshire. Do not go. Very dangerous. I thought Australia was dangerous. Until I started reading about these things happening in Lincolnshire. Dreadful, dear. Dreadful. You can call in if you want to, boys and girls. Lines are now open. A line has become available. 0208 344 If you fancy a little chat with me this morning about anything at all. Anything at all, OK? 0208 344 Or if you have Skype, you can Skype into the programme. The Skype username is United Kingdom Talk. All one word. United Kingdom Talk. Or the phone number 0208 344 um, ba -ba -ba. Alan says you should see the spider I killed last year. Good grief, it was half the size of my hand when it was in a caravan in Lincolnshire. See? <clears throat> Lincolnshire is alive with ghastly spiders. And people in Skegness. <laughs> my children didn't want to stay anymore. I had to go home after our third day. Oh, well, you got the spider, didn't you? Is there sprays for spiders? I mean, you got them for flies. The fly spray is very good, isn't it? You see a fly fly. Psst, psst, it just drops straight dead onto the floor. Powerful stuff. Uh, do they do a human version for people that annoy me? You know, just give them a quick. Psst, and they drop dead. I'm liking the sound of that. I will order 10 cans immediately. <laughs> and so much better than those nasty little. What are those things that they. And they do electric into someone. Oh, um, not scanners. Oh, what are they called now? You know those, that the, the police have got them and they say, and they fire this thing and prongs go into your leg or somewhere and then they push a button and electric goes into your body. What's that called? Is it a scan? Oh, God, I can't remember the word now. Tasers. Tasers, that's it. Taser. Taser, taser, ta Oh, it's someone at my door. Might be my router. I'm so excited. Wait there.
very much. Do you want to come in for a cup of tea, dear? Oh, come on, come in. You're very nice. What's your name? Hello? Hello? Come back! Oh, it's gone. Here it is! Look! My new 300 meg Virgin Media router. Oh, yes. One moment, please. Oh, how exciting. Oh, it's like Christmas. Every I love it when boxes come. Here it is. Oh. 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 My new Virgin Media router. Oh. Mm, I love, oh, it's all lovely and new. Oh, look at, look at the size of that bitch. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Look at the size of this. Wow, that's big, isn't it? Little on off button there. Got my bits and pieces to connect there. Oh, lovely, look. Got the passwords and all that. Excellent, excellent. So I shall install that shortly after the show today, boys and girls. And think, well, you probably won't notice any difference. It won't know. <laughs> Nothing will be different to you. It won't. Now, where were we talking? That's it. Um... <sighs> Let me have a look. Uh, love and hearts to Chris. Thank you for my love and hearts. It's very, very kind of you. <laughs> Wendy says, oh, you don't have to wait in all day now. I'm very pleased about that. Very, very pleased. I haven't got waiting all day for that. I might even... Oh, I'll pass 11. I don't think I'll get a swim in this morning now. It'd be too late to do that. I've got a bit of paperwork as well to do. Um, good. Where did we get to there? Now, you remember I said to you I went to meet up with um, Rachel and Anne. Now, they're the two ladies I'm doing the charity uh, gig through in a few weeks' time at the end. Here's, here's the information on that. Uh, it's a karaoke night. Being held in Woking at the pub called The Fox and Flower Pot, as you can see out there. It's on Saturday the 29th of July from 8 o'clock. OK, that's uh, this year, 2017. There's a phone number there if you need to ring that, but you probably won't need to ring that. Just turn up, OK? We are raising money for the Barry Manilow Music Project, Cancer Research and the Dogs Trust on this day now, as well as the karaoke. Uh, we've got a darts thing going on and a tombola as well. So that's all happening on that day. Now, when I went to meet them, because I like to a little look at the venue and see where I'm setting up and everything, um, they, they've given me something. They gave me this picture. Look at this. Isn't that lovely? Now, that is drawn by an artist in Japan called Yuki. Yuki. Now, it says 1659. I think that's probably 9, 5, 16. Do, do the Japanese put the dates the wrong way around as well, like the Americans? Because here, you know, like today is 3, 7, 17. Now, I think the Americans would put 7, 3, 17. Well, this is completely back to front, this one, 16, 5, 9. So I don't know when, if that's the date of it, but isn't that lovely? She drew that. That is a drawing on a piece of paper of Barry Manilow. Do you know, I think his head suits me, doesn't it? Look, it's the same size as my head. <clears throat> me and Barry have the same size heads. We have so much in common. We're both huge mega stars. We can both sing. We're both disastrously good looking. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> 0208144377 if you want to call in this morning, all right? Uh, tasers. Yeah, that's what we need, tasers. We need tasers, boys and girls. Tasers or spray. So when someone annoys you, you go, Psst, and they drop down dead. I like the sound of that. I'm sorry, I like the sound of that, don't you? <laughs> Just a suggestion. Uh, anyone see Doctor Who last night or Saturday night? How fantastic was that? Doctor Who, fantastic. I was in floods of tears. What an excellent, excellent episode. The whole series has been great. And Peter Capaldi has by far been my favourite Doctor since Doctor Who restarted, which is about eight or nine years ago now. By far my favourite Doctor. I thought he was excellent. And I was crying my ass out. But everyone's dead. Everyone's dead. The girl died. I can't remember her name now. Is it Ross? Les? Ross? Can't remember. She's died. First of all, she was converted into a Cyberman. 
but I don't think the conversion works properly because she could still cry. Uh, she died and she ran off with her girlfriend. And then Missy and the master have died. Everyone's dead. And the doctor doesn't want to regenerate. He said, I've had enough of changing my image now and again. And right at the end, the very first doctor, obviously it wasn't William Hartnell, but someone who looks like him, has come back in and he says, he says, I'm the doctor, I'm the doctor, I don't want to change anymore. And at that point, the one who's playing the very first doctor walks in and says, no, you're not. I'm the doctor. I'm the doctor. And then it finishes. Very, very exciting. Oh, and it's not until Christmas. <clears throat> we got all that time to wait. Really excellent episode of Doctor Who, I thought. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, as I say, looking forward to Christmas uh, when uh, when the Christmas thing, I presume the doctors will change over um, at that point. Um, and that that is how television should be, you see. All this releasing box sets all at the same time on Netflix or something like that. And it doesn't actually give you anything to look forward to. You get to the end of one programme and it might be a cliffhanger. Oh, oh I just watched the beginning of the next one and then you, you, you've killed it. You could have had a week of excitement waiting to build up to that next episode. But, oh, no, I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. It's like I've mentioned so many times, Christmas and birthday presents. People who give children or, or other people, in, not necessarily children, people who give other people, old or young, their birthday or Christmas present early. You know, what you get in, what you get in Gary for Christmas. Oh, I've already given it to him. He wanted it now, so I, I thought I'd give it. So what happens Christmas Day? No present. Everyone's opening presents. You haven't got one because some idiots already given it to him first. No, absolutely not. Now, we need a little bit of excitement. Everyone wants everything now. I've only got to go into blooming McDonald's. Um, I tell you what, the worst, the worst example of that is the KFC in Clapham. They've got some really hard-working people behind the till, especially on a busy night, and they're so rude. The customers. I have never heard rudeness like it in my life, as what I used to hear in um, Clapham. Now, I, I worked in Clapham for uh, 18 years. I left the place I worked at about three weeks ago now. And quite frankly, I was glad I couldn't wait to get out of that place. Not necessarily the venue, the area. It's a dump. It's a dump. Oh, oh, how can you say that? The houses are worth 10 million pounds. So? So? Doesn't make it nice. It's awful. You go up and walk down Clapham High Street at, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. You do not feel safe. Horrible place. Horrible place. Not necessarily busy all the time either. Just ghastly people walking up and down the road. Funnily enough, um, Camden is, is on a Sunday night. When I finish on a Sunday night... At 11 o'clock, we, we do karaoke at the Cams and I every Sunday, 8pm till 11. As I was talking about that earlier, last night was fantastic in there last night. Really, really good. Um, and it's, it's, it's... Oh, that, honestly, that, that's from Yodel telling me my parcel's been delivered. I know! I've got it in my hands, you blooming idiots! Stupid people. Uh, you come, so you come out of Cams and High Street, and that is, is, there's a lot of characters walking around there. But you don't feel unsafe. Isn't that strange? I mean, it's, it's so busy all the time on this particular corner I work on. Cam's and I. And outside the window, I can see the black cat. Where I was for 18 years there. And that's that's quite nice being able to see that outside the window and looking across. And how sad that that, that has closed down. And, and ridiculous, really. It's been closed now over two years. A prime location in the middle of Camden Hydro. You would think that something had opened there, there, wouldn't you? You would absolutely think that something would open there. But it's it's completely closed down. I think they've even got a bloke living there or, or, or a lady living there. Um, what they called like guard, guard, guardian angels or something like that, I think. Very, very strange. Very strange. Good morning to Will McIntyre. Good morning, Will. Oh, well. Uh, Will McIntyre, is that is that the Will I know? Let's have a quick look. Is that I think it is you? It, it is. Hello, Will. Of course I remember you. Of 
course I remember you. I remember the first time you sang at the karaoke, Will. You stood on that stage and Victoria was, uh, Vicky, was down there and you sang her a song. I thought you were trying to get with her. <laughs> I did, Will. I actually, I thought you were trying to get with her, Victoria. Huh? How lovely to see you. How are you doing? What, what job are you doing now? Uh, Will says, I used to work at Belushi's London Bridge. Yes, he was one of the... Uh, uh, bar it was a wonderful place to work, Belushi's London Bridge. One of the best jobs I've ever had, that job. I tell you, fantastic. Uh, I used to sing a fair bit of karaoke. I remember, Will. I, I remember you so well, my friend. I really do. And everyone else there as well. You know, all the boys and girls that used to work beyond there. Sometimes they come and see me. Where, wherever I work and they, they, they pop down and see me. And it's always such a nice pleasure. Uh, Carla always comes. And uh, the other one, Cara. Cara, Carla. Um, the little blonde girl, she comes. Can't remember her name now. And um, Louis, Louis, uh, Louis's been there. Yeah, so they come around now and again, Will. Lovely to see you, mate. It really is. Morning, Tony Power. Camden is great. I miss that place. Did you work in Camden as well, Will? I did do the Belushi's in Camden. That one didn't work so well there. I was there about a year, probably a little bit more than a year. But to be honest, that one didn't work so well. I don't know why. Just one of those things. London Bridge was the one. Well, actually, Anne Hammersmith. Hammersmith and London Bridge karaoke Belushi's I used to do were just fantastic. I loved it. I lo what I loved in there in particular was you had all these people from hundreds of countries all over the world, mainly young sometimes older, but the whole crowd would just keep changing week on week. It was a fantastic job, that was. Do you know that job did get offered back to me about two... Because then we had a... You left, and then a new manager took over, and he didn't... I had no problem with him, but he just didn't want karaoke. He cancelled it, and, uh, of course, we had two karaokes there, Monday and Wednesday. Uh, he cancelled the karaoke. Well, very quickly, both the nights completely died. Uh, he either moved on or was moved on about a year later. I don't know which. Um, his name was Chris, I think it was. He was all right to me. He said, I just don't want karaoke anymore. Thank you very much. And that's the way it goes. You know, you, you don't argue. It's pointless arguing. You just accept it. Thank you for the work all these years and move on. That's how, that's how this game works. You must never, ever feel that you've been hard done by. Never. Never. You've been paid a lot of money over the years. Thank you very much. Carry on. But I, I missed that job so much. So I went out and find an, found another Monday night to do. About a year later, uh, someone else took it over and they rung me um, almost immediately. They took over, I think, uh, because the, the two nights were completely dead and they offered me the Monday night back. Unfortunately, I'd already taken another job and I, I, I thought I'd love to do that job again. I'd love to. But I'm a very loyal person, Will. So if you was to give me a job after I'd gone from somewhere and then the other place rings me back and said, do you want to come back? No, I've got another job now. You know, they were good enough to give me a job. Do you see what I mean? So that I, I, I am. Um, so I didn't take it, unfortunately. I'm very happy where I am Monday, but I really, really miss that job. It was fantastic. They only have one there a week now, I gather, Will, uh, on a Monday. Will Young. That's it. Will Young. Will Young. Will Young. I remember Will Young. That is your name. The same as the singer. As that sing or song go, la 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 da 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 da. Brunswick in Melbourne. I, you know, I think I've been there. Brunswick in Melbourne. I'm sure I was there. Uh, I was in Melbourne about five years ago. I love the swimming. You've got an old-fashioned swimming pool there in Melbourne, haven't you? And that old uh, tram that goes around the middle all the time, free of charge. Is it still free? Old-fashioned tram. I got in the cab there. Uh, I'd been on it a while when I was talking to the driver. And I must have been on there for an hour talking to... I think he was from Italy. And he loved his... He said he loves driving trams. Can you believe that, Will? <laughs> I'm sure you were trying to chat up, Vicky. I'm sure you were. Dear, dear me. Anyway, nice to see you on there, Will, OK? Hello to Christina. Morning, Christina. Uh, from Portsmouth. That's not too far from me, Portsmouth. You've got a Catholic cathedral there, haven't you? I must come down and visit that someday. I like uh, like churches and all that. Hello to Ben. Ben's just joining us this morning. Alan says, I think it's gone really quick doing karaoke after nearly 30 years in the game. I hope I'm still doing it in 30 years. Have you done been doing it for 30 years, karaoke, Alan? Wow. 
Well, I, I was DJing <clears throat> between the ages of 18 and now, and 54. I gave up the DJing about th about four weeks ago. I got fed up with it. There's there's no there's no excitement or enjoying for me in, enjoying me DJing anymore. I if if offered a I mean I don't have anything I have a Tuesday and a Thursday free, but they probably wouldn't want that anyone. If if I was offered like a 70s and 80s and 90s DJ job, I might take that or a house or house. I I might take that, but just normal bar DJing that just doesn't do it for me anymore. I just get bored. Certainly in, in gay clubs. Straight clubs, I'd probably do it again. Not in gay clubs. I keep blooming moaning all the blooming time. Tony says, funny you should mention that about Clapham. I was on my way home from a certain pub two days ago. I noticed there was a couple, a boy and his girlfriend, lying on the pavement. I was getting on my motorbike on the opposite side and the boy had puked up in front of me. Oh, that's almost as bad as the story I heard on the news this morning. Now, I've got something rude coming up, boys and girls, so get ready for that, OK? Get ready for that. Um, boy was sick in front of me. I was about to go for something to eat and that put me right off. <laughs> oh, poor lad. Didn't you go and help him? He might be nice, you know. Isn't that awful? You know, when you're with someone and they, they're sick and then they want to kiss you afterwards. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the smell that comes out of their mouths. Not a very pleasant experience, is it? Someone trying to kiss you after they've been sick. No, no, no. He says, uh, Tony says, I like Clapham, but I see what you were saying about the place in general. There's always some kind of incident in the high street. And uh, you've only got to just walk up from from the, um, uh, let me think, you know, Starbucks at the top. You walk from Starbucks at the top down to uh, the two brewers. OK, and you just you just have a look around you at the the, the people that are like um, walking around. You do not feel safe there. You absolutely don't feel safe there. Don't like it at all. Don't like it at all. Tony said they kissed each other after. <laughs> well, dear. Well, <laughs> you think that's bad. I've turned on the telly this morning. I like to watch the news uh, as soon as I get up. Uh, in the morning. Oh, here's something rude coming up. Something rude coming up. And immediately came on some schoolgirls chatting to, I think it was Victoria Derbyshire, um, who hosts the programme. They were talking to her. And the first things that come out of these, these girls' mouths were vaginal hair. And I'm sitting there with a plate of baked beans, onions and two fried eggs. And I, oh, my God, I don't want to hear this in the morning. I just, I know it's like a natural thing and all that, but you don't want to be listening to that while you're sitting there having your breakfast, are you? They were, they were talking, I think it was about, it was, of course, a serious subject. I think they were talking about how young girls are seeing models and things like that. <clears throat> and one of the subjects that come up was vaginal hair for some reason. And, oh, no, I had to quickly flick that over and watch Casualty where I think a heart or a lung was being removed, something like that. But it was much preferable to listening to the conversation about vaginal hair. <laughs> it's a good job I weren't eating a bacon sandwich or something like that, and there was hair on that. Can you just imagine? How ghastly is that? <laughs> oh, Christina says uh, St. John's is the Roman Catholic Church. The Easter service is well attended. We all got... Uh, <laughs> cream chocolate eggs, uh, St. John's. Yeah, not the church. Isn't there's a isn't there a cathedral in Portsmouth? Portsmouth Cathedral, Roman Catholic Cathedral. <clears throat> I'd like to go and visit that at some point. It can't be that far from me at all here. I'd like to go and see that or something. Uh, and Alan's having a fried egg and onion sandwich. I like onions, don't you? I do like the taste of onions. Do like the taste of onions. Anyway, I showed you the uh, the Barry picture. That uh, Anne and um, Anne and Rachel gave me, didn't you? And of course, we've got the the new Barry picture for the month, July. Because we, we, I forgot to turn it over on. Was it Saturday? Was the first? Of course, you start getting hate mail from Barry fans. Oh, you do. Honestly, you say you like Barry Manilow and you haven't turned that calendar. How could you? Hate mail starts coming through if I make a mistake about Barry Manilow. Don't ever mention his nose. They go mad. 
Barry Fanelos, they do. I am a Fanelo. I've, I love Barry Manilow. Eight times I've been going again next year. 2018 is here in September. Got your tickets yet? No? Oh, well, all the good seats are gone, I'm afraid. Yeah, all the good seats are gone. So we're looking forward to Barry um, uh, coming along. Oh, hello, Eloise. There's one there. There's a Barry Manilow fan just joining us today. Good morning, Barry. So we're looking forward to him coming. I'll tell you what I was disappointed with. Um, and... Fans are fans. They they love. I mean, they, they, there's there's big fa there's fans. Maybe you're a fan. There's big fans. I can class myself as a big fan. There's proper hardcore fans, which is a lot of the ladies I know. But then there are um, oh, what's the word? Fans that kind of take it just that one step too far. Do you know what I mean? And they're absolutely obsessed. By the start. I mean, probably, probably one or two of you are a little bit obsessed by me, aren't you? Go on, be honest now. You are, aren't you? And when I disappear later, you won't know what to do with us. Oh, God, Chris has gone. What's happened? We don't know what to do with us. I, I, I can't. It's OK. It's OK. That's OK. You don't have to hide. I can understand you being obsessed by me. Probably people out there at the moment are watching the show thinking, you know, oh, how can I get to be with him for the rest of my life? I understand that. Well, of course, Barry has them as well. All these stars have obsessive fans. As I say, there's there's fans. There's huge fans. I.e. Fanalos, I would say me. There's real hardcore fans, which is a lot of the lovely girls I know. But then there are obsessive fans. They're a little bit worrying sometimes, you know. They would be walking, Barry and Manilow obsessive fans, would possibly be walking around dressed in the same clothes as him, maybe had their faces changed. Oh, I saw, you know what I saw the other day? Some bloke has had his face <coughs> so many operations that he looks like Ken from Barbie and Ken. You know, that doll, Ken. Oh, really weird. Really weird. His face is all puffed out like this. He's has implants, so he's got that, you know, those... Things in your chest, or what they called, you know, where you got the lines, oh, like like rib cage, uh, rip. I think it's called ripped. He's got an implant there. Very very strange indeed. Now this is what's upset me a bit. This was in the Daily Mail um, yesterday about Adele. Now you may remember De Adele's got uh, had some concerts last week, and she had to cancel two of her concerts because she's done her throat in. Fans have expressed their fury on social media after Adele cancelled two London concerts at the last minute, costing many people hundreds of pounds. On Friday, the heartbroken 29-year-old singer said in an emotional post that she was forced to cancel the gigs at the weekend. The combined audience was about 100,000 people at Wembley Stadium. The Grammy Award winner said she was desperate to play the concerts, which she dubbed a milestone in her career, as she pleaded with fans to forgive her. But some of those fans still feel too bruised by the news to forgive her yet. I mean, it's awful. And here are some of the tweets that people sent her. Thanks, Adele. What about the hotel and travel I've paid for? Disgusting. That's some Chris. Ellie. Adele cancelled her show at Wembley Stadium due to vocal problems. I've maxed out on steroids. She's a weak pop star at best. Miguel. Great job, Adele. It's not easy to anger 200,000 people, but not for you. It's a pity we can't see the Wembley Stadium. Well, enjoy London. Shara. Just isn't good enough. So many have forked out to travel in and stay. So just free uh, be refund and I'll be done with it. Adele needs to stop cancelling her gigs. Huge costs that are not refundable to her fans. Just getting a refund on ticket doesn't do it. Jade. With Adele cancelling, what am I meant to do about the expense of a hotel that won't refund and train tickets? Devastated.
I think that's awful. Why, oh why, would you attack her like that? Well, I know you've lost money, but it, it's not her fault that she's got a bad throat. I think that's disgusting. And this is, this is just how people are now, isn't it? Why, oh why, would you attack her for that? It's not her fault. It's like me, you know, maybe tomorrow, I mean, it's happened to me before, you know, suddenly I disappear from these shows, you know, for a week. Well, I've got flu. It wasn't my fault. I didn't ask for the flu. She didn't ask for a bad throw. She's probably overdone her vocal cords. That's, it's not her fault. I think that's really disgusting and awful how people have attacked her like that. And poor old Adele, you take as much time as you want. <clears throat> Fans like that, who attack her are just not worth worth being fans. I'd cut them off. Don't send them any more tickets if I could. I really could. This has happened to Barry Manilow uh, a couple of years ago. I think he had uh, he got suddenly got bad flu and he had to cancel uh, a few gigs. And most people understood, but some people actually attacked him. Not physically, you know, verbally and these. I mean, this Twitter thing is just a load of old crap, isn't it? I don't use it. The only the only reason I use Twitter is to advertise what I do. I never go on there and have conversations. People are just vile and disgusting. They really are. And to say that, to say that to Adele is just horrible. These people shouldn't even, they're wasting their oxygen. Oxygen is being wasted on these people. Leave her alone for Christ's sake. I'm not a huge Adele fan. OK, she can sing. She sings lovely ballads. I'd, you know, but it's, it's too much sad stuff that she said. I do like a ballad. Don't get me wrong. I like ballads. I like Whitney Houston ballads. You know, he wasn't man enough. Um, you raise me da 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 da. The, you know, the, the big Whitney Houston ballads with big orchestras and all that. I like Adele's stuff, but she's not my great big cup of tea for me. But that doesn't matter. Why talk to someone like that just because they're ill? Disgusting. Disgusting. And those people should be ashamed of themselves. I don't understand why people go on um, Twitter and think they can say anything they want about anyone. Well, you lot are disgusting. And I wish sometimes Twitter had never been invented. They mouth off all the time, don't they? Ben says, good for you, you're so right. I'm, I'm, well, you know, it's just horrible, it really is. If someone's ill, they're ill, and that's the way it is. You can't do anything about it. Eloise says, Barry cancelled in LA two months ago and everyone was understanding. I was there. Oh, yes, Eloise, most of them were. 99.5% of them were. But I have seen the odd one, you know. It's like when Barry Manilow came out as being gay. Some of them attacked him then. They do feel the need to comment, don't they, all the time now, people. Whereas before, that, oh, she's, you know, oh, Adele's ill. Oh, fair enough. No, it's not Adele's ill. I hope she gets better soon. Adele's ill. Well, that's disgusting. Well, what did you want her to do? Just stand on the stage and smile at you? If she can't sing, she can't sing. And that's all there is to it, isn't it? There we are. All right, boys and girls. Um, a singer can't sing with vocal cord problems. Of course they can't, Adele, you know. Isn't it ridiculous, uh, Eloise? But there you go. That's, that's, that's how the world is now. People think they come on and say what they want and it doesn't matter who they hurt anymore. You've only got to tell on, turn on the telly and look at people like Jeremy Carl or um, what have you got over there? Uh, Jerry Springer. Something like that, where these great big things stand up in the audience and start waggling their fingers in full view of everyone. I don't think so. You know, I'm sure there's one or two people that might might want to drag me on, Jeremy Carl. I wouldn't go on there, not for £10 million. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Right, gang, uh, let's do today's birthdays. And then I'm going to try and set up my new Virgin router. How exciting. Uh, birthday time, boys and girls. It's today's birthday. Uh, Adam, Adam J. Stewart. That's Electric Blue. He's a drag act. He's got a great voice. 
Um, he is 28 years old today. Uh, Electric Blue, I don't think I've worked with you yet, have I? Not properly, only at karaoke. So hopefully at some time uh, uh, soon. I think you're fantastic, all right? Happy birthday, Adam. Happy birthday. Uh, Tim Harvey, who's a neighbour of mine. He only lives two doors away. He's been on the telly. We call him Television Tim. He's one of the um, police... Now, what are they called? It's not a police officer. It's like, you know, the ones on the motorway. What are they called? Police traffic officer. I think he's a traffic officer. He's quite high up. Uh, he's a traffic officer. I think he does the M25. And he was on that program recently where they were doing the M25. That's my neighbour. Just two doors down. Television Tim is 57 years old today. I'm very pleased to see, Tim, that you're older than me, my friend. <laughs> we're all kind of around about the same age along this road. So happy birthday, Tim. OK, uh, Mayan Mark Ores Agorpra. I hope I've got your name right there, sir. 23 years old today. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Benjamin Totten. Hello, Benny. All right. Ben is in the house. Ben has been on the television playing the guitar, uh, I think, on X Factor or The Voice. It was one or the two. Uh, happy birthday to you, Ben. He used to come along to the karaoke uh, when we did in Sydenham, which uh, we don't do anymore. Unfortunately, that one died. I'm never quite sure why that died. We can't work out what went wrong there. Um, it was busy. It was quite, quite, quite. And then suddenly it got busy. It got busy very suddenly. And it was busy for six to nine months. And then, bang, it died. And we don't know why. Can't, if, you know, if I knew why... Then I would tell you, you know, if, if I said to you, you know, the bar staff were terrible or I was really rude to people, I would tell you. And that's why it died. But no, we, we can't find the reason that that one died. It's very, very strange. That Anyway, happy birthday to you, Ben. I hope you're doing well. And uh, please say hello to your friends for me. Um, oh, I haven't got their names in my head at the moment, Ben. There's Kieran. Uh, is it Dave, the tall one with with the, with all that hair? <laughs> Happy birthday, Ben. Uh, Sebastian, hello, Seb. He comes along to the karaoke nights. Always nice to see you, Seb. You missed a good night Sunday. You've been to a couple of the Sunday ones, haven't you? And you weren't there last night. It was packed. It was really good in there at the Camden and I. Happy birthday. Uh, Ray Chapman, happy birthday to Ray. I did a little bit of DJing a few years ago for him in Eastbourne. I think it was Eastbourne. Happy birthday, Ray. Uh, Luke Nicholas Turner. Hello, Luke. 28 years old today. Happy birthday, Luke. And Laurie... Morgan, happy birthday today to Laurie Morgan. Let's sing the song, gang. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday to one and all today. Well, it's Monday night, boys and girls. If you're not doing anything this evening, come come along and join us at our very busy cheap drinks night at Central Station this evening. That's in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. It's karaoke every Monday night with myself and our wonderful bar staff. We've got a really good team there. It's a team effort in there. It's not, not me and them and him. We all work together there, and it's a fantastic place to work. It really is. It's the closest place I've ever worked to where the place I loved for so many years, the Black Cap. The, the Central Station is a fantastic place to work. Do come along and join us tonight and every Monday for karaoke between 8 p.m. and 11.30. And once again, it's cheap drinks as well tonight. OK, uh, any last messages? Uh, Christina says, good luck with Virgin Router. Don't forget to call in to get it registered. That's right. Yeah, I've got a call in apparently, haven't I? I've got a phone number there as well, so I'll do all that. Have a lovely Monday and I'll see you again very, very soon. Cheerio now.